writing equations in slope-intercept form. So we're going to take a look at situations where you need to create an equation. Slope-intercept form is kind of our, our basic go-to of equations. So if I need to write an equation, this generally is what we kind of start working with. It's a really friendly equation to work with. Our slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, m is our slope, b is our y-intercept. So we're going to write an equation in slope-intercept form when we're given the slope and a point. In order to write an equation, we really need two pieces of information. We can have two points, we can have a slope and a point, but we need to have two pieces of information in order to create an equation that applies to word problems or kind of generic situations like this. So if we have a point 2, negative 3 and a slope of 1 half, we can start with our slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and we're going to plug in what we know. Notice we've got um, a y-coordinate, a slope, an x-coordinate, and a y-intercept. One, two, three, four things here. If I can fill in three of them, I can figure out the fourth one. So I have um, an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and a slope. I can fill in three. So I'm going to put my x value where the x is, my y value where the y is, and my slope where my slope fits in. That leaves me only missing my y-intercept. So I'm going to do my math here. I'm going to do 1 half times 2 and get 1. I'm going to try to get that, isolate that variable b by subtracting 1 on both sides. I get negative 4 equals b. So I have my y-intercept, I have my slope, they gave it to me right at the beginning. So I can plug those into my slope-intercept form, y equals my slope, one-half, times x minus, or plus a negative in this case, my y-intercept is a negative four, so plus a negative four, or minus four. So there's my equation that represents the line that goes through this point with this kind of a slope. This equation now represents every point on that line where this situation was talking about some specific pieces, this, will, this I can use to figure out any point that will be on that line. All right, what other pieces of information might they give us? So they could give us a point and a slope. They could just give us two points. So if we're given two points, we're going to write an equation for that. So let's work with slope-intercept form, very friendly equation to work with. I have these two points here. So one thing I can find out from those two points is the slope. I can use the points they gave me to actually find the slope using our slope formula. So I'm going to plug my points into slope formula here, m representing slope, um, y2 over y2 minus um, y1 over x2 minus x1. So remember, this is one of my ordered pairs here. I put the y in the numerator and the x in the denominator, subtracted, and then behind that I've got my y in the numerator and my x in the denominator. So this is an ordered pair. This is another ordered pair. It's an easy way to check to make sure your number's in the right spot. Do my math here. I come up with 4 over negative 1, so my slope is negative 4. So now I'm back to where I was before. I know a point, and I know my slope. So I know my slope is negative 4, so I can plug that into my equation. I actually know two points at this case, so I could use either one of them. If one is more friendly than the other, go ahead and use it. Both of these points are on the line, so both of these points will give you the same y-intercept once you do the algebra for this. So if I plug in my negative 4 for y, my slope, my x-coordinate, um, and my, my variable I'm going to keep for my y-intercept, I'm going to do my algebra through, um, through here, and once I work through, I end up with my y-intercept is negative 16. So now I go back to my slope-intercept formula. Again, I know my slope, and I know my y-intercept. I'm just going to plug them in y equals negative 4x minus 16. This is a really nice plug and play equation. Um, we just take that form, we plug the slope in, we plug the y-intercept in, and then right there we're done. Pretty straightforward. So we're going to take a look at using a real-world situation and creating an equation in slope-intercept form for that equation. Uh, I find slope-intercept form is a relatively friendly equation to work with. I find it's the one I tend to use as my go-to. Um, I think of it as a plug and play. Slope is right there, y-intercept is right there. I have two pieces of information really sitting right there that are easy to work with. Um, we're going to take this equation and we're going to see if we can predict what might happen um, in, in the future or in a situation outside of the data that we're looking at in front of us. So let's see what this, what this, re this word problem represents. During one year, John's cost for self-serve regular gasoline was $3.20 on the 1st of June and $3.42 on the 1st of July. Write a linear equation to predict John's cost of gasoline for the first of any month during the year using 1 to represent January. So the first thing I want to do when I have a word problem is define my variables. And by that I mean I'm going to decide what my independent and my dependent variables are, what they represent, and what letters I'm going to choose to use for them. 
So we're in this situation, we're talking about the change of gasoline over time. So we're talking about change over time. So right there, I know that the change of gasoline is my Y, and the time in months is my X, because our rate is change of Y over change of X. So change of gasoline in over time, over months, X is my independent variable. I'll know what month it is. Y is my dependent variable. That can tell me what the cost of gasoline is. I'm going to use X and Y here instead of using M and G or M and C for cost or dollars or anything like that to help me kind of remember which one of these is my independent variable and which one is my dependent. My cost of gasoline will be my output in this equation. That is Y equals. Um, and my months will be uh, my, my X value, my, dependent, my independent variable in there. It's going to be my input in this particular equation. So when I look at this as X and Y, that really kind of reminds me that I can think about it as an ordered pair or point on the graph. So I can write the information I know as ordered pairs. They told me that in June, the cost of gasoline was $3.20, so I can write an ordered pair to represent that. And they told me that in July, the cost of gasoline was $3.42, so I can write another ordered pair to represent that. And once I start to see this, I realize, oh, wait a minute, I know how to find an equation from two points. Like, I can do that, we've done that before. So let's take those two points, and we're going to start by finding the slope. I'm going to use our slope formula. I'm going to put, take my first ordered pair, plug it Y on top, X on the bottom, subtract. Again, take my second ordered pair, Y in the numerator, X in the denominator, do my math. I come up with a slope of 22 hundredths. So the price of gasoline is changing at a positive rate. It's increasing at 22 cents per month. So let's take that rate of change, that slope, and plug it into my slope um, intercept form where my m is. So this is starting to look like my equation. I'm just missing my y-intercept here. So to find the y-intercept, I'm going to take one of these ordered pairs. I just chose the first one. I'm going to plug it in for y and x. I'm going to do what I know how to do here with the algebra. And I come up with my y-intercept is 1 and 88 hundredths. So I plug that back into my equation. My equation is y equals 22 hundredths x plus 1 and 88 hundredths. So this means that I have a rate of change of 22 cents, um, 22 22 cents per month, my gasoline is changing. My starting point, if I think about um, January is our month one, December would kind of be my month zero, where I started this whole change going on. So it was $1.88 before we got to January. All right, what are we going to do with that equation? Because it really makes sense for us to use it for something. This linear, linear extrapolation uses a linear equation to predict values beyond the range of data. So we have a set of data. We're going to look at numbers that are outside of that range. That's our extrapolation. Here's our question. On average, John uses 25 gallons of gas in one month. He budgeted $100 for the month of October. Use the equation to predict if John will have to add to his budget. So we're going to drag our equation from our situation into this. I'm going to use 10 since we're talking October, so I'm going to plug 10 into this equation, and I come up with $4.08 as the cost per gallon in October. That's a seriously steep increase in gasoline prices. So October, it's $4.08 per gallon. He uses about 25 gallons of gas per month, so when I look at that, he's going to spend about $102 for his gas in October. He only budgeted $100, so he's going to have to add to his budget. Not a whole lot, but he's definitely going to have to add to his budget. So we were able to use this equation to predict what might happen in the future.